today is April 1st, April Fool's Day. And what we thought was once a dream season for the Knicks may not be so after all. And what are we doing about these Jalen Brunson nine minutes when he's on the bench? Let's talk about it. Run that intro. Basketball. You're listening to the Knicks Nation Podcast, where we've got all your Knicks needs covered. Puts up a three. Bang! Bang! He ties the game! Now, live from the city that never sleeps, here are your hosts, Anthony and Chris. What is going on, Knicks Nation? We are back for another podcast. This is episode 42 of the Knicks Nation podcast. Knicks are coming off a couple of bad losses, tough, heartbreaking losses, one to the San Antonio Spurs and the recent one to the Oklahoma City Thunder. We're going to talk about a lot of things tonight. Um, the, obviously, the, the, the latest injury updates regarding Julius Randle and OJ Anobi, that Jalen Brunson stats when he is on the bench. And everything, and of course, the trivia at the end. But at first, Chris, what's going on? Not much, man. Like you said, Knicks, two tough losses. One to the Spurs, you know, and obviously one to OKC. Still feeling the sting from it, but I'm doing all right, man. How you feeling tonight? Doing all right. You know, last game was tough. It was tough. I mean, we'll take a look at the standings. We'll even do a playoff picture for you guys, and we'll we'll give our votes and... I have different scenarios, which I'll run through Chris and I'll run through all of you guys and we'll just go through it together. But first, I wanted to touch on, um, I guess we could start with with Chris. I mean, Jalen Brunson has has been playing at an MVP level, but the Knicks problem at this moment is when Jalen Brunson is off the court. Two straight games when Brunson comes off the floor, it goes completely haywire. The last two games, this is a little, little nugget for you guys. With Brunson on the court, the New York Knicks are plus 37 with him off the court, they are minus 41. It's not looking good. It's not great. It's not great at all. And look, we're dealing with a lot right now. We're dealing with a lot of injuries, but it just has, you know, these last two games, it's sort of been, it sort of has magnified, you know, our lack of bench play, really. I mean, minus 41 when Jalen Brunson is off the court. Ah, Chris, when you when you hear that, it's not good, man. It's not good. Yeah. It's it's not it's not what you want, right? It's not what you want. You want to be able to sustain leads, you know, just at least play enough well enough that you still have at least a lead when Jalen Brunson comes back instead of having yeah. to, you know, lose an entire lead and then having to build it up again or you know, or even losing a lead and getting to a really big deficit and having to battle back. So I I can't quite pinpoint what what the deal is, man. I mean, a lot of these guys that are playing when Brunson sits Overall, playing really well for us. You're talking about guys like Deuce. You're talking about guys like Precious. But for whatever reason, once Brunson is out of the game, it's like a whole different team almost is out there. Yeah, and and look, the the scoring drought is is it's not great. I mean, Bogdanovich and Burks. It's been obviously look. It's like being in dead horse at this point. They've been bad. And Burks has been out with a shoulder injury. Bogdanovich has shown us a little bit past, I mean, last game he didn't really show us anything, but it's just non, it hasn't been consistent with both of them. And when you're starting McBride, when you're starting Josh Hart, and, you know, normally those guys were coming off the bench and those guys are playing heavy, heavy minutes. So when Jalen Brunson is getting his normal rest, those guys are staying in the game. You know, those guys are pretty much staying in the game and say what you want. But eventually, you know, Deuce playing 45, 46, 47 minutes a night, that's going to take a toll on him, no matter what his age is, you know. And it, it, it he, and he, credit to Deuce, he's been playing through this. He's been playing absolutely incredible, did a great job on OKC. But, Chris, you ever heard of the, fa- of the phrase, failing to prepare is planning to fail? I guess that's what the Knicks were thinking when they traded for Bogdanovich and Alec Burks. Because when they traded for Bogdanovich and Alec Burks, which we'll touch on the, the Rando and Oninobi injury, they knew about the Julius Rando injury. And, you know, they thought that those two guys will give us enough offensive punch, offensive firepower until we can get, hopefully, Julius Randle back or hopefully OJ Ananobi back. 
they thought those two guys were the answer. And it just hasn't worked out. And that's been the main reason why we're seeing this 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 non pretty much they're not playing well off the bench. And this that's been the that's been the main concern from Knicks fans and from everybody. But yeah, man, it's just they planned they 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 knew that they had to get people in here, more offensive power, more offensive weapons, but all in all, it just hasn't worked. Yeah, and it and it sucks, man. It sucks because like you said, Burks and Bogdanovich before they came to the Knicks, both of them, they were lights out, light out, lights out shooter. Bogdanovich was a- averaging 20. Burks was shooting 40% from three. I yeah. think maybe 43. You know, I was excited. Knicks fans were excited. We were like, that's the scoring punch we need right there. And it made all the sense in the world for the Knicks to do a deal like that especially for what they gave up at the time. So it still surprises me how 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 badly they've played here in New York. It is, you yeah. know, in my opinion, I think Bogdanovich is probably, you know, pressing a little bit. He needs to be more aggressive, you know, be more aggressive and stop trying to overpass. And Burks, I just, I, I know he just came back from a shoulder injury of sorts, so maybe he'll round out into shape, but I don't know, man. Do you think the Knicks kind of the just I don't I don't think they missed the boat per se at making that deal. I think it was a deal like again with the way these players were playing at in Detroit. I think it's a smart deal that they did, but do you think they should have just did a little bit more just in case Randall didn't make it back or you know an OG hadn't extended? I know I know in hindsight you you can't really you can't really, uh, you know. You can't go back, really. I mean, you can't go back. You know, you can't just. I don't know, man. I don't. I don't. I don't. Uh, I. I don't. Because in the moment, I love the trade. Bogdanovich was averaging nineteen a game. Burks was exactly what you needed. We, at least, we thought he was exactly what we needed. But, but look, normally in this situation, this is why having another star on your team is very important, right? We're 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 kind of right. seeing it here because normally the Knicks would stagger Brunson and. Julius Randle, most of the time they would play them together. Um, but the reality of the situation, this is what operating with one star on your team is like. And when your second score is Dante DiVincenzo and, and spurts Deuce McBride and Isaiah Harnstein kind of creating and controlling the offense a little bit, what he does really well, this is the reality of the situation. We're operating with one superstar. And when you're missing two major pieces to the puzzle – it's it's you're going to see these minus 41 when Brunson is off the floor and plus 30 something when he's on the court. And at this point, you know, it is what it is. I mean, we'll give an update shortly. We have some audio for you guys. Josh Hart audio, Wojnowski audio, Shams audio. We got all the audio for you guys. <laughs> um, But also, I just wanted to say that what the Knicks have been able to do with all of these injuries Take a step back here. They've been dealing with a lot of injuries. They're fighting for the third spot in the Eastern Conference. Still fighting for the third spot in the Eastern Conference. That is ridiculous when you take a step back and actually, you know, take a look at the broader picture. Especially what the New York Knicks have had to deal with. The Randu injury. The in and Obi in and out the lineup. The Mitchell Robinson missing 52 games now. 51 games. Um... We're still number four in the Eastern Conference. And I just want everyone to, you know, actually realize that, that we're still number four in the East. We're still fighting for the third seed. And, you know, right now it's just these past couple of games like has, has kind of magnified, you know, our, our negative situation. So, yeah, for sure. And and, and that is true. We're, we're right there, you know, battling for that third seed. And, and I agree, man, with all the injuries we've sustained, you know, with all the ups and ups and downs in the season, you know, this team is is doing amazing. Amazing when you really look at the full picture, like you said. But and going back to the Brunson, the, the non Brunson minutes, what yeah. do you what do you think the Knicks can do? I mean, if you were if you were Tom Thibodeau, you try to I mean, try to get a little bit creative here. What <laughs> what do you think you can do? to help this team when it comes to Jalen Brunson getting some rest on that bench? Are you shuffling players around? Are you just... Who would you... 
the, the the one play I would like to see more and what we've seen from him was actually some positive stuff is Shake Milton. I would like to see maybe look if 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 Burks doesn't have it, give Shake a give push Shake in there, man. At this point, I mean, look, the race is getting tight. What eight games left, Chris? Got Miami coming up yep. here and then um the the Kings. But at some point, you know, you got to give Shake Millen an opportunity. But other than that, I would like to see Josh Hart get more aggressive on the offensive end. He's been, you know, grabbing a bunch of rebounds, the best rebounding guard in the league. He's been doing Josh Hart things, what Josh Hart does really, really well. Kind of hesitant at times. I think he had a bad turnover versus OKC. He tried to lob it to DiVincenzo, which was, I mean, one, one at least one pass a game where you're just shaking your head. Like, Josh Hart, what, what are you seeing out there? <laughs> but I want him to be more aggressive a little bit because I think the Knicks could use that extra scoring punch, and they they desperately could use that because, look, last game when DiVincenzo was off, I mean, we were still in it, 10-point leading the fourth. We could have, you know, won that game, but when Brunson came out, that's when things got stacked in, and, you know, the Knicks didn't really have an answer for OKC. But that's what I think they could do. Um, they, they're just they're not working with a lot here. You know, it's just yeah. at, at some point it's going to be hope that Burks gets going, hope that Bogdanovich can snap out of it. I know it's at, at this point it's it's bleak looking like bleak out there, but that's that's really what they can do. You know, what do you? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think I think the same. I think Shake Milton, that was my first kind of uh, choice because you want somebody who's going to be able to handle the ball, initiate the offense. Not that Deuce can't do that, but just somebody else, you know, because at times you see it just gets clunky. And we can't afford to keep giving up these leads, man, especially late in games going into the fourth quarter. Yeah. You know, so I agree with you. I think I would like to see Shake, but like you said, you know, there's not that many uh guys we can go to outside of what? Jericho Sims. Uh, I don't know what you're going to get there. Um, Yeah, I mean, there's not that many choices with all the injuries we sustained, so. Hopefully the Knicks can figure something out. And if you play Precious more, which I would like to see, I mean, on the offensive end, you know, he's he's limited there, but I would like to see more Precious minutes because he's been he's been solid for us in the minutes that he's been giving us. So, like like you said, like I said, there's not really much you can you can so, sort of tinker with lineups, but you know that's not what Dibs wants to do. You know, we're really dealing with a lot, and Dibs really isn't the one to try this or try that. I mean, he's going to stick to his guns. He's going to stick with his guys, and that that's what it's going to be. Hit some of these comments in the chat. Appreciate every single one of you in here. Big Taz, what's going on? S550, what's going on? Um, had a question in here from King Third Eye Supreme. What's the return date for Mitchell Robinson? I think he is questionable versus the Miami Heat, so hopefully he can get out, out there um, when the Knicks play the Miami Heat. Uh, Buzzer Beater, what's going on? Brunson is my MVP. Because he has had less help. Yeah, man. Brunson is doing everything out there. I mean, it kind of, I don't want to compare the two players, but it kind of like these last two games, it kind of like, remember Melo when Melo was doing everything out there? And I'm not comparing the teams. I'm just saying it kind of like brought me back to that place a little bit. And then we just <laughs> couldn't come out on top and it was just Melo scoring a lot. But once again, no, I'm not I comparing think... the two. I'm just, I mean, I think that's a fair fair comparison at this point, though, because, like, yeah. we're waiting for OG, we're waiting for Julius, you know, and it and it seems like that. You know, Melo didn't get much help. I mean, Brunson is getting help, don't get me wrong. Like you said, you can't – it's not apples for apples, but yeah. it does feel like that. You know, when he's the offensive punch and he's the one basically carrying the team on offense, like, I, I see it. I see it. Yeah, all right. So we have some Josh Hart audio regarding the Knicks injuries. This was Josh Hart last night regarding Julius Rando and OG and Anobi. Um, nah, I mean, I I'm looking at it like, um, this is a team that we're gonna have, you know. Uh, you know, I, I think that's how, you know, we have to approach it, you know, that, that those guys, um, you know, aren't coming back and then obviously we'll be pleasantly surprised if they come back. So, um, you know, I'm not in, those medical conversations or anything like that, so I don't know, you know, I'm but, um, you know, we got to... So pretty much he says he'll be pleasantly surprised if OG Ananobi and Josh and, and uh, excuse me, Julius Randall were to come back. No follow-up question after that. I think the interview ended. Would have liked to hear a follow-up question. But Chris, today, 
it seemed like the Knicks, they sent the bat signal to Adrian Wojnarowski. Right after the Josh Hart interview, Adrian Wojnarowski came out today, and this is what Woj had to say. Seems like the Knicks kind of, you know, were kind of tempering. They kind of wanted to ease our nerves a little bit. So here's Woj on the injuries. Josh Hart, he seems resigned to the fact that OG and Anobi, Julius Randle, they are not walking through the door anytime soon. Is he right, though? What are their timelines to return? Malika, let's set aside Julius Randle for a moment. Nothing has changed on him. He's not been cleared for contact yet. But OG and Anobi, listen, I'm told that the Knicks, they want that elbow, which had a loose body taken out of it uh, at, at the trade deadline. Early February, he came back played a couple of games and then went out again. They don't want him in and out of the lineup. They want uh, that injury, the inflammation, uh, the irritation to, to go away. And that when they bring OG Ananobi back, he can stay back. And they've got certainly a, a look at the big picture of having him healthy, ready, uh, hopefully for uh, the postseason. That doesn't mean he won't come back during the regular season, uh, but they don't want him in and out of the lineup. Uh, and this is an organization right now that wants to play it safe with Ananobi. They're 15 and two in New York mm. in games he's played this season since that trade from the Raptors. So he pretty much didn't give an update on Julius Randle. And regarding OG Ananobi, he says the Knicks want the inflammation to go down. And it's looking like that. I mean, I, I will be keep saying it, but it's looking like he might return before the playoffs start or maybe when the playoffs start. So some sense of optimism there after that Josh Hart interview yesterday, Chris. But I feel like the Knicks kind of sent out the bad signal to Woj and kind of were like, oh, just say this really quick because we don't want everyone going crazy in New York. No, for, for sure, because because I didn't hear that Josh Hart clip at all until earlier today. And right away, I was like, oh, man, that is not what you want to hear. Yeah, because right away, you you know, it's Josh Hart. We all know he just speaks his mind. He, he doesn't hold anything back. So right away, you're thinking, damn, they probably talked about this, you know, as a collective unit. And he knows something. So to me, it was like, all right, OG, Julius, they're not going to come back. They may not even come back playoff time. Maybe things are worse than we have, you know, worse than we we think. Because that's not outside of the Knicks realm either. They keep things close to their chest. They don't. They don't give us much updates. I mean, look, look, Julius. We still haven't heard if he has contact or not. So, it worried me, and for sure, I think this Woj update was definitely damage control by the Knicks. Yes. They probably did not like there that Josh go. Hart said that, and they're just like, uh, you know what? Let's 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 call out to Woj and uh, let's just you know put water on this fire real quick. That's the word I was looking for. Damage control. Yeah, it, it it was so obvious because after that hard interview, everyone was like, oh, my gosh, pretty much what we pretty much were expecting. Like at, at this point of the season, we didn't know what to expect. Woj came out and kind of gave some optimism regarding OJ and Obi, not Julius Randle. Julius Randle. This is just my two cents on the whole Julius Randle situation. Don't know if you guys share the same sentiment or you Chris share the same sentiment. I have a hard time to believe Julius Randle won't at least try to come back because he got hurt in January and the Knicks said the injury was just a separated shoulder, right? They didn't say it was a labrum tear. They just said it was a separated shoulder. So at this point, we see him before the games working out, working like crazy, still doing controlled contact. Let me give you two scenarios, two different situations, I think, in the NBA that have the same injury. Both out for the season. Um, not the same injury, but Kevin Herter, I think Kevin Herter on Sacramento, hurt his shoulder. Same injury. They said, I think he's torn his labrum out for the season. I think Richardson in Miami, same injury, out for the season. The Knicks didn't say it was a labrum injury for Julius Randle. They keep saying it's a, you know, um, dislocation. dislocation. So... Julius has been doing all this side work. And for him to just pack it up until next season, Chris, why not just get a surgery? Why not just opt for a surgery in January? For him to just pack it up and just not try to get out there? Because we know during the playoffs, teams are going to try to attack that shoulder. And we know 
they're going to try to test them. They're going to try to be like, all right, you're on the court. Let me bump. Let me bump you a little bit. Let me try to test that shoulder. So that's my two cents. I think Randall will ultimately try to come back because at this point, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't yeah. hurt. Yeah. I mean, like you said, why wait this long and not get the surgery if they know or it's close to him getting the realization that maybe he won't come back, you know? Like, that doesn't make sense to me. That's just wasted time, in my opinion, when he could be rehabbing or, you know, getting ready for the next season, if that were to be the case. Yeah. So I think personally, like like you, you know, Julius is going to give it a shot because, look, this Knicks team – this is a good team. If we get OG and Obi back, which it seems like right now, you know, things are on the positive side, looking like he might be back before, you know, playoff time. Look, let's be real. Julius Randle wants to be a part of this playoff push that the Knicks are looking to make. Yeah. You know, I'm pretty sure Julius is going to feel some type of way if the Knicks make some deep playoff run and he's not a part of it. You know, I think he even mentioned that um, on a pod recently that, you know, he wants to be he he wants to be here he wants to win in new york he wants to be a part of it all yeah so to me that tells me he's going to do whatever he has to do to get out there come playoff time yeah so i think he'll be ultimately i think he'll give it a try he'll give it a shot because why not just have the surgery at this point you don't want to wait till the end of this month or may and then oh julius randall's out for the season no 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 yeah. i mean then, then the surgery timeline is what three to four months. Then that's going into kind of next season. Got a poll in the chat. How much? How far can the Knicks go with OG and Anobi and no Julius Randle? First round, second round, or the Eastern Conference Finals? So far, fifteen votes. Second round is winning with that buzzer beater with the super chat. Appreciate you, buzzer beater. Going back to the mellow talk that we were having. Chris Mellow had Jeremy Lin. He effed it up. He sure as hell did, and that. I remember that, man. Jeremy Lin was going off. You know, I still remember that Laker game Jeremy Lin had. And, yeah, Melo messed that up, man. I mean, I'm sure he's spoken about it plenty of times, but that that killed me, man. I mean, Jeremy Lin, that could have been something special in New York. I mean, it was something special. It was. But it could have been more if, if they just didn't bump heads, you know. Yeah. That was fun. That was fun. That was fun. That was a fun time, man. I miss those times. I mean, you know, I miss that feeling. But we had it in January, and it just seems like that dream is kind of, I don't want to say it's turning into like a nightmare situation because we're still number four in the East. We're still, I think, I believe with OG and Obi coming back, I still do think we can win one round. I think we can get to the second round of the playoffs. I think we can beat Orlando or Indiana with OG and Obi and Jalen Brunson without and an OB and Brunson, that's a different story. But I do think we can go around with an and in the lineup. S550 says, Jew is definitely a player who doesn't like sitting on the sideline. There's only a few games left. It's either clear him for contact or get the surgery. Bottom line, clear him for some contact. Let him get out there. Let him test it a little bit. Make him a spot-up shooter. Do whatever. It, 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 what One thing is clear is I don't feel like he's feel comfortable. He feels comfortable with that shoulder because otherwise he would have been out there already. Or the Knicks yeah. are just saving him into the playoffs and just they're just being radio silent about everything. But, yeah, it's either you should have got the surgery in January or at least try. At least try to get out there because I see him before the games. He looks good. He looks <laughs> like the Julius Randle, but we're not. We're just seeing him shoot. Like he's in the park by himself, just shooting. Try. Yeah. Jew, I, I th big Jew, please. I think for sure he's going to try. I think he's going to try. I think it's going to come in the playoffs, though. You know, I think they the way the Knicks are probably thinking is, look, let's not risk it in the regular season. You know, my thoughts is maybe, maybe that's, you know, a morale killer. If they go, you know, bring him back in the regular season and then boom, right away he's out again and then, out for the season yeah could be kind of like a morale killer you know so i think what they'll do is you know give it a shot in the playoffs and if you know hope, hope for the best right but him not going through full contact that you know i don't know man it makes me nervous it makes me nervous because to me that just tells me they haven't even tried yet to see what might happen you know like how does yeah. it feel so like you said julius probably doesn't feel too comfortable with it yet 
but time's running out. Bob says, also, that is the shoulder he uses to create space. If there is no feeling there, he's going to hurt it more when he comes, when he rebounds the ball. Yeah, Bob, I mean, I've been saying that. That's the shoulder he loves to use to create space. I mean, that's his, you know, opposite shoulder from his uh, shooting shoulder, and he loves to use that shoulder to create space. And like I said, playoffs are a different animal, and I do think Julius Randle right now does not feel comfortable enough to go out there in a in a five on five game situation or he's like i'll give it another maybe another couple of weeks and i'll go through contact and then we'll just see what we can go from there but yeah it seemed like like i said it seemed like wojanowski today did some damage control on those josh hart comments so it kind of eased the minds of knicks fans they all the knicks also changed the, the injury designation to ananobi it's the knicks are now listing ananobi's injury as a right elbow tendinopathy I hope I'm saying that right. I probably botched that. They had previously called it injury management and said he was dealing with inflammation in the elbow. So same same thing. I mean, same yeah. thing. I think um, Mark Berman actually came out and said, this is good news because I had the same injury three weeks ago and it just took me a couple of weeks to rest and I was good to go. So <laughs> <laughs> two different people and he probably didn't have the same injury, but yeah that means it should take og and anobi like less three than days half the time. yeah exactly <laughs> yep that's funny oh man i mean i just hope we get og and anobi back because again you know i think with og and anobi and jalen brunson i think that's enough to be honest i mean with, with everybody else we have hopefully mitch gets back you know hopefully he doesn't get sidelined with the the recent uh i think he got a sprain or a slight tweak but, yeah. um, you know, with him, I heart, DiVincenzo, OG, Jalen Brunson, I like our chances, man. S550 says, it's been said Julius is a rhythm player and he needs to ramp up before he gets on point. So throwing him in the middle of the playoffs might hurt us more rather than help us. Well, I mean, look, Knicks did it last year, right? Knicks did it last yep. year. He came back first round and he had a great moment. Um, and I think it was game one, grabbed a big rebound, re-injured it, and just got surgery in the offseason. So he plays through things, you know, but with shoulder injuries, it's it's, it's very different than a, an ankle injury. You know, yeah. it's very different. Yeah. Um, I agree, though. I agree. Julius has always been a rhythm player, you know, yeah. so that's going to be – it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough, especially if he's just coming back in the playoffs, but – I'd rather have him out there than not, you know, because like I, in my opinion, I think they'll use him as a decoy. He'll be more of a shooter, maybe like, you know, a third option per se. But hopefully, he can still command some doubles. But one thing is for sure, teams are gonna know that he's coming back from that injury. They're gonna test him right away. Yeah, they are. Um, all right. So once again, I do think Julius Randle is at least going to try to come back. Maybe. Last two games, maybe playoffs. I think he'll at least try. Why get to this point? Why work out? Why work your ass off and then just pack it up until next summer? I don't foresee that. I don't see that as being Julius Randle. I just can't. I just can't wrap my mind around Julius Randle just saying, "All right, see you guys next season." You know, I've done this. I've done. I've worked out. You've seen me work out before these games. That's not Julius Randle, man. And I know we're getting no update, but. I, I feel like he's going to give it a shot. And if he gives it a shot, and if it pops out again, then he gets the surgery. But I, I'm sure that's not good in the long run, but he tried, you know. And OG Ananobi, that I think is more optimistic regarding him. Once again, we played the Wojnowski clip. It seems like the Knicks are just waiting for the injury to um, the swelling to go down. And... 19 votes in the in the in the in the YouTube 20 votes now. How far the Knicks, how far can the Knicks go with OJ and Anobi and no Julius Randle? It is second round is winning this poll, Chris. I agree. I think yeah. I think we can win a round and we'll go through the playoff matchups um right after we talk about this, but what do you think? I think we can win a round with with OJ and Anobi and no Ju. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. And we and again, we've seen the impact OJ and Anobi gives us on this team even without Julius Randle out there, even without Mitchell Robinson at that out there. So, you know, second round, we could definitely get there. 
All right, Chris, I got some playoff scenarios for all of you guys in the chat, and here we go. So there's been a lot of talk about the second seed, and look, I think the Knicks right now are not going to finish the second seed, but here's some playoff scenarios that I got. Scenario number one, you finish the second seed in the Eastern Conference, and right now you would either be playing Miami or the Philadelphia 76ers. Newsflash, Joel Embiid is returning this week for the Philadelphia 76ers. Wow. So. Do you really want that second seed and playing Joel Embiid and the Sixers in the first round? I don't. <laughs> That's scenario. I'll be honest. I wouldn't mind playing Philly. Look, you don't? I know. Okay. okay. I know Embiid coming back, but similar to Julius Randle, he's gonna need some time to get back into the game shape. You know, so I, I think I like our chances there. Now, Miami, for as much as I'd love to get some revenge there. I'm probably going to stay away from Miami. You know, <laughs> I got a lot of respect for Miami. That that so, team is, that team could be dangerous. Yeah. So that's scenario number one. Scenario number two is you finish the third seed in the Eastern Conference, which I do think the Knicks will ultimately finish. Look, Cleveland has a tough schedule here. And look, call me optimistic, but I think the Knicks will finish number three in the Eastern Conference. Then at this moment, I believe you play Indiana. I haven't got a standings update, but I believe you play Indiana in the seventh game series. Or... Scenario number three, you finish number four, you play Orlando. And scenario number five is you finish number five and you lose home court to Orlando. So, yeah, Chris, what do you what do you what do you say about that? Let me pull up the standings while you go through. I that. think I want to finish th three seed. To be honest, I'll take my chances again against, against Indiana. You know. Yeah. Orlando. I like our chances there too, but they they they're a good team, man. They're a good young team, and they got a lot of depth. They got a lot of good players over there. So, in in my opinion, I'm I'm going against Indiana if we can get that three seed. Yeah, that'll be look. Here's the bracket right now. Season ended today. Four or five matchup. It will be the Knicks and the Orlando Magic. Three six. It will be the Cla the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Indiana Pacers. You want to finish at least three and four so you can get home court in the first round of the playoffs. But I had uh, I put up a, a poll in uh, the YouTube channel, and I wanted to get your take on this, Chris. This was from our YouTube channel. No, wrong one. Uh, all right. The Knicks could play any of these teams in the first round of the playoffs. Which team would you prefer the Knicks to go head-to-head -head with? Pacers, Magic, Heat, or 76ers, or the Cleveland Cavaliers. Of course, the Cavs won, right? <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. You know, like, again, Jalen Brunson versus Donovan Mitchell. We all know who's who's been on top, whether it was on when Jalen Brunson was on the Mavs, whether it's Jalen Brunson on the Knicks. You know, I'm going Cavs too, man. You know, we played too, too good against them not to pick them. Ah. <sighs> I would pick the Pacers. I really, I, I think, look, I know Tyrese Halliburton and, 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 and they, they scare me, but I think the Magic, they, I don't know, they have size. I think the Magic, they have, you know, Paolo Bancaro kind of scares me a little bit, but I think, I think any of these teams, if we had OJ and Anobi, we can, we can win a first round playoff matchup, but it'll be tough at the end of the day. It will be tough. It's not going to be an easy playoff series. Not at all. No. So. I mean, that's the thing. All of these teams can can go out there and, and win a series, you know, like the Pacers can, the Cavs sure as hell can. And the Magic, again, they're young, so they got really nothing to lose. They haven't been here before, so it's like house money for them. Yeah. Um, S550 says, how how far do you think we can get with OG but no Randall? Yeah, I think we can get to the second round with OG and no Randall. I really do. We're 15-2 with OG and it'll be on the court. I really do think we can – get to the second round evan says orlando is young but the knicks have dibs <laughs> new york in five or evan says a gentleman sweep versus the magic i Let's like go. that i like that um but if we have can't oh, go ahead. out of orlando man i keep yeah. saying it <laughs> yeah you can't you you can't count them out and you can't come out count out any of these teams us dealing with what we're dealing with now these brunson minutes when he's on the bench i read you guys the numbers what is it minus was it 30 something or 40 something and plus 37 with Jalen Brunson on the court. So that is an issue at this moment. And look, it's, 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 it's not going to be easy. These last, these last games in the, in the regular season. So 
yeah, I mean, we can say we we want the Pacers, the Magic, the the Cavs, but at the end of the day, how far are we really going with no OJ and Obi on the court and Julius Randle? You know, yeah. if we don't have both of them, I mean, I'll be I'll be hopefully we can win around, but at that point, I wouldn't be shocked if we went out in the first round. And how could you be upset? You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at that point, you know, you you couldn't be upset. You know, Jalen. We all know Jalen Brunson is going to do all that he can to get us as far as we can go. But look, a lot of this is based on will we get OG and Obi back? What do we get from Julius Randle if and when he comes back? So time time will tell, man. Orlando won tonight, so they are now a half of game half game behind us, man. They're right on our tail. They're right on our butt. You know, and we got a tough game versus the Heat. And the Heat are playing, starting to pick it up here. So look, we can drop down to five. We can drop down to six. It's 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 possible. But I ultimately do think the Knicks will finish three, four, five. That's where I think the Knicks finish. Orlando won tonight. They're a half game behind us. And they own the tiebreaker, right, Chris? Yeah. So they yep. own the tiebreaker. So, yeah. And we just have to, you know, keep on winning without without our guys. But I, I feel like the guys – I feel like the guys will come through, man. I feel like – I don't know, man. I feel Maybe it's like blind optimism, but <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I feel like something's going to happen here. I, I do. Because remember, Toronto game was awesome. You know, it's just that these last two games were just stinkers. Toronto game was awesome. We were we were beating everybody. Uh, I think I, the, one time we were eight and two in a lot in our last ten game stretch. So it's it's we're still playing well, but yeah, these past two games have kind of humbled us a little bit, you know, which I kind of like. Sometimes we need to be humbled. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that, right? No, for sure. Yeah, and I mean when when you really look back, that Spurs game, you know, the Knicks came out with low energy. They they weren't playing defense the way that they should have from the get go. Got down big, made a huge comeback. Yeah, took the lead at one point. You know, then it was back and forth, back and forth, and bam, heartbreaker. Then we play OKC, who you know, top team in the West. Play OKC, we took them to the brink. Right, had a chance to again close out that game. They didn't go our way. To me, that's that's positives. Yeah, it sucks that we lost both those games, but just the fight that this team has, you know, that's something, in my opinion, that that you can't teach. To have a to have that fight to come back to just not give up, that's going to serve us so well come playoff time. Yeah, and I just think it's a it's a everything compiled. Spurs game happened. The Thunder game happened. Yeah. Josh Hart comments right after the game. <laughs> And then today, the kind of damage control done by Woj kind of, you know, saying, oh, wait, 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 wait. You know, OG is, is still going to come back. They're still optimistic OG will come back. No update on Randall. Yeah. So I just feel like it was just, yeah, like you said, it was just those games, hard comments and, and whatnot. Oh, and don't, and don't forget the the officiating by the NBA referees, all right? <laughs> you got to throw look, that one in there, too. Look, I have a, a wind horse sound bite that will play in a few, in a few, but about Jalen Brunson hunting fouls, apparently. So, oh. yeah. Um, this week ahead, we got the Heat, the Kings, the Bulls, and the Bucks. Um, at Miami, it's tough, man. Miami's playing well. It's going to be a tough game. But uh, what, what do you think after this week? What do you think our record is? Four games. These four games, I think the Knicks will go two and two. Two and two. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's two and two. Yeah. yeah. Kings, Chicago. You win, win against the Kings, you, you beat Chicago. And if you can go down to Miami and win, that'll be absolutely amazing because yeah. that'll kind of separate yourself from the Heat because there's still three games behind you. I'm not saying the Heat will catch us, but, you know, kind of give yourself a little bit of breathing room and, you know, solidify yourself in the four or five spot and, we got the Bucks again. Dame has been out for some personal, personal. Um, I, don't, I don't know what he's dealing with, but yeah, it's 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 not going to be easy. All right, I have another sound bite from from Shams about the injuries, and then we'll go on to the Jalen Brunson, the, the stat crunch and whatnot. Here's Shams regarding the Knicks injuries, kind of doing Shams and Woj that did kind of uh, like you said, damage control today. But the uh, the Knicks, no Julius Randle, no OG Ananobi yet. What can you tell us about that? I'm nervous. 
Yeah, th these are serious losses for the Knicks. I mean, obviously, Ojin Ananobi, he's been out since March 16th, inflamed elbow. Uh, the hope is that the inflammation goes down. At some point, he's going to be able to come back. The, the hope is, has been that it's going to be when, uh, more of like which day exactly, which hmm. game exactly, when is he going to wake up feeling better than if. Uh, but with Julius Randle, it's a little bit more precarious. I mean, this is someone that's been out since January 27th. We're already into April. And he still has not done anything more than controlled contact with that dislocated shoulder. And Josh Hart, his comments I thought last night were very telling. He said, we have to operate as if neither of those two is going to be back in the lineup. So for the Knicks, it's really a wait-and-see approach. It seems OG Ananobi is more likely than, than, than Julius Randle at this point. But we'll see. Um, and Mitchell Robinson also missed the game last night uh, with, with, his, with the ankle injury as well. But, so Mitchell but Robinson the, uh, the is... Mitchell Robinson's question, well, hopefully he can get back. So got some um, optimistic people in here. Miami is nowhere near OKC. Yeah, John, Miami is nowhere near OKC. But Miami can turn a switch in a blink of an eye like that. You know, um, John says we were going 4-0 during this stretch. I like it. I like yes. it, man. Yeah. I mean, I wanted to say 3-1, and one, but, again, I got respect for Miami. So <laughs> S550 says I'm being optimistic 3-1. and one. Kings, no Malik Monk. Kings are dealing with a lot of injuries. No Hurter. True. Um, Malik Monk. But take care of business, man. At San Antonio was tough. They they they're they're really they are one of the worst teams in the NBA, and we we couldn't pull that one off. I know the referees and whatnot. I try not to think about the referees, but I did. I just I just keep coming back to it. Um, it's part so, of it, man. <laughs> John says Bucks are soft as Charmin. <laughs> Never count us. Jabroni, what's going on? I love Jabroni. I love when Jabroni comes in here. I love that name. I love saying that name. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, three and one, two and two, three to one. Get the job done. Get the job done. All right. Got some stats here from uh Tommy D that I'll bring up. Um, all right. Um where is it? All right, there we go. Chris, you wanted to read that one? So this is from Tommy Bear, per basketball reference. Jalen Brunson is just the fourth Nick to score 90-plus points over a two-game span, joining Patrick Ewing, Carmelo Anthony, and Bernard King. Brunson is the only player in franchise history with more than 90 points and more than 12 assists over a two-game stretch. Top five MVP candidate for the NBA, not to include him in the top five MVP. It's absolutely Absolutely crazy. I mean, Brunson, what he's doing these past, what I mean, this season. I mean, he's he's, he's awesome. He's our MVP, and he he's been incredible. He's been sixty one for San Antonio. I mean, yeah. we lost, but still, it's incredible, man. Chris, this was an alarming stat that we uh from from again Tommy Bear that I wanted to bring up. Um, all right, so Jalen Brunson free throw attempts in December seven point three free throw attempts per game. Jalen Brunson free throw attempts in January. Six and a half free throw attempts a game. In February, seven and a half free throw attempts a game. And in March, a cutoff. What was it? 4.7. So 4.7 free throw attempts per game. So it, it's not on the screen, but it cut off in March. So from, from February to March, it went from seven and a half to 4.7, which is absolutely crazy. I wanted to play this soundbite from uh, Windhorse, but... What do you think the issue is right now? Because what more can this guy do? Winhorse says he's he's he, he uh, his he, around the league he is known for hunting for fouls. This is from Brian Winhorse, and this is what he's hearing and what the NBA's are saying. He's he doesn't have the same reputation of Trey Young or James Harden, but they say Jalen Brunson is hunting for these fouls. Therefore, you know, the NBA is starting to crack down on these ticky-tack fouls or starting to call the games like they're playoff games. That's the reasoning that he said why Jalen Brunson isn't getting to the foul line. You see the drastic dip in March. Three, what, three, 61 points. He went to the line, what, six times in that game? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's like right here what Tom, Tommy Bear is saying. Over the Knicks' yeah. last two games, Jalen Brunson attempted 45 shots in the paint, yet Brunson was sent to the free throw line only seven times. So, I mean, what do you think? You think he's hunting these fouls? Because to be honest, 
Jalen Brunson is driving into the paint, and to me, guys are jumping into him. You know, there's 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 definitely contact. And don't get me wrong, Jalen Brunson will get somebody up in the air and obviously try to draw that contact because that's what you're taught to do. But a lot of times, these guys are basically cross-body blocking Jalen Brunson and nothing is being called. You know, maybe the maybe the way the refs see it, they think he's flopping a bit or something, you know, snapping his head back or something like that. But a lot of times, man, it just looks like he's getting beat up. A foul is a foul. What Tom Thibodeau has been saying at the end of these games is yeah. write what you see, right? I think that's what you're saying, write what you see. Yeah. Uh, something along those he said, lines. He said so, write it five times. <laughs> yeah, so – he doesn't want to get fined. The Knicks don't want to get fined. Jalen Brunson is just like, oh, that was a great call or that was a great no call. Like he's – he doesn't – like I'm sure like it bothers him, but they don't want to get fined. At the end of the day, they say they're sending in tapes. But, yeah, we're seeing now that, you know, like I brought up, SGA has 200 more free throw attempts than Jalen Brunson. And, look, Jalen Brunson is on the smaller side. He's six foot. So does he have to kind of sell it more? Yeah, but if it's a foul, it's a foul. If somebody's going to hip check you in the mid while you're driving to the layup and and you clearly get bumped and fall to the ground, call a foul. It's a foul, you know? And it just stinks that, you know, he just has to go through this and at this moment, but and we just even have to talk to this. You think I want to be talking about the NBA refs and fouls and what not a foul and Brunson's free throw attempts because it's clearly gone down and we've seen it but at the end of the day what more can we do than just just come on here and then preach that he needs to be called more and look he's on the smaller side so does he does he hunt fouls at times I don't know but when when you hear that Jalen Brunson is is, is a foul hunter I kind of I don't feel like he's a foul hunter but I, there's times when he does see contact, when he tries to, when his defender's like, when he goes through the pick and roll, his defender's trailing him, and then he does that little jump back until to get his defender to foul him. Great. If you call that, I mean, he's hunting for the foul. And two free, two free throw shots. But I don't feel like, I, I, I just can't compare him to like a Trey Young or like a James Harden. I just can't compare him to those guys. Yeah. I just can't. I can't either. I can't either. Simply because, look, I'm not saying that Trey Young and, and James Harden aren't smart players or aren't trying to be smart when they're drawing fouls, because I think that that's a part of it. You know, you have to have a high IQ to be able to do it. But you know, we all seen Trey Young and James Harden. They're really good actors, man. Really good actors. And that's the thing with Jalen Brunson. I don't think he's going out there purposely trying to flop or oversell. You know, contact. I just think he's, you know, he's a physical player. He's going to go down into the paint. He's going to try to get contact and push shots up. You know, maybe at times here and there he might snap his head back. Sure, everybody does it in the NBA. But to call him a foul hunter, uh, I don't know, man. That's, That's kind of a reach to me, in my opinion. And like you said, he's a smaller dude, you know, going into the paint against guys like Wemby, guys like Chet Holmgren. He's getting beat up. And for whatever reason, they just will not call a foul. And what drives me insane is when Jalen Brunson gets bodied on one end and then somebody else comes down and it's a ticky tacky call, like barely any contact. And they're giving somebody free throws down the other side. That drives me insane. And we saw that in OKC, the game versus OKC. Yeah. Here's what we're referring to regarding the foul hunter comment that Brian Windhorst said. George, you're a thing with Brunson, you know, he doesn't have the reputation of like a Harden or a Trey Young, but he's a foul hunter. Oh, yeah. You know, he uses the dark arts and I'm not taking a side. I mean, there were obviously times this year. I mean, the game in Houston being the grade A example where Brunson got an unfair whistle. But this is what the league referees are cracking down on. The, the fouls that he gets sometimes are not what they're going to give him. And think the Knicks. All right. He's, uh, I don't know, Chris. I mean, there's the look, uh, I don't know. What, what's your response to that? <laughs> they're, they're trying to make it sound like something so dark, man. Like, but again, I say don't, the dark, I the dark, yeah, what? The, dark uh, the dark side. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I don't know, man. I think that that's a, that's a bit of a reach for me, in my opinion. 
You know, I don't I don't think Jalen Brunson's going out there. Like, yes, you are trying to draw contact, you are trying to draw fouls, but it, I think it's a whole different ballgame when your whole game is predicated into like tricking somebody into or or abusing the rules in a sense that you can bend them to get a ref to call a foul. You know, that's a whole different story. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah, when I don't I don't believe Brunson is a foul hunter or <laughs> um <laughs> Look, the comments are going crazy right now. You guys can read it. I don't want to. I don't want to read it right now. But um, <laughs> calling fouls in the playoffs are much different. It can cost you a series. Yeah, and look, that's what the Knicks are going to have to deal with. And look, they've been look. Our game is predicated towards the playoffs, right? When we're fully healthy, where our game, you know, slow pace is predicated to a playoff series. OG Ananobi locking down defenders and and whatnot. Brunson, you know, methodically getting to the line and you know, pretty much demoralizing teams. And that's 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 pretty much our game. And the playoffs, that the, the referees are trying to change the way they're calling things. But a foul is a foul. Call a foul if it's a foul, especially in that late game situation. Look, could the Knicks have? Look, it would have been Knicks would have went up one. I mean, the Knicks were missing a bunch of free throws in that fourth quarter. Who says he even makes a free throw? I'm just saying, call a foul, put the Knicks up two, and then it's a different game at the end of the day. So it is what yeah. it is. Yeah, but I think overall the refs, the NBA referees, the officials, they just need to be better, man. Because we we're not only seeing this with the Knicks per se, but like other teams where there's really bad mistakes. You know, I keep thinking the the jump ball violation on Mitch, where the ref clearly throws the ball up, and then you as a player, what are you gonna do? You're gonna jump yeah. after it, and they call a violation. They don't even re jump the ball. They just say no Spurs ball. So again, you know. Officials need to be better. They need to be held more accountable, in my opinion, and they need to do a better job. Jeroni says, Star Nick players have a history of not getting the calls they deserve. Mello and Patrick Ewing never got their respect when it came to foul calls. Yeah, I mean, it's true. It's true. I mean, it, it is true. But uh, hit, some, I mean, he hit the poll again. How far can the Knicks go with OJ and Obi and no Julius Randle? We're up to 40 votes First round is at 29%. Second round is at 41%. Eastern Conference Finals is at 29%. I think we can I the, there's a what the way that we can get to the Eastern Conference Finals in my opinion is obviously if we get let's say we get the 2 seed, we play Miami, knock out Miami. Second round, let's say Orlando. Play Orlando, knock out Orlando. And then that's the way I think we can get to the Eastern Conference Finals. But I feel like second round, because has expectations changed a little bit for you? Because I don't know. I don't, I don't, I feel like it's, that question is, is too premature, <laughs> but I don't want to get to that point. But I feel like yeah. it's starting to get to that point where my expectations are starting to change in my mind. Like before I expected this next team to go Eastern Conference Finals. Or win two rounds, you know, take a step from last season. But now we just don't know what to expect. And it's maybe that's a premature question, but I don't know. Has expectations changed a little bit? I mean, I, I think it's fair. I think it's fair to, you know, think like that because there's so much up in the air right now. You know, we don't know when OG and Anobi is going to be back. We don't know if Julius Randle is going to be back. And that's a big piece. That's a big piece on, in my opinion, as to how far we're going to go. Yeah. You know, even getting OG Ananobi back, let's say we just get OG Ananobi back, similar to the poll, to the poll you have up, you know, just with that alone, I think we can make some noise, you know? So to me, if we do get OG Ananobi back, I think we can make a, a deep run. You know, that's, that's my thoughts without him, then yeah. Definitely uh, tempering expect expectations, man, because come playoff time, if all you got is JB on the offensive side, you know, that's going to be tough. I feel like Jalen Brunson is that dude that can win around by himself. And you just say, I, I feel like he could do it. I feel like he can do it. But, you know, right now, look, seasons, look, Miami is next. Um, then Sacramento, I laid out the schedule for you guys. But look, season is ending in these next couple of weeks. And then we get. If we're not in the play-in tournament, which I don't expect us to be, then I think we get another week off. Remember that. Because then you have those playoff, the play-in matchups. So you get this week, next week, and then 
a little bit the week after that, and then you get another week because the play-in matchup. Or this week and next week, and that's it. And then the play-in matchup. Probably got my weeks wrong. But, but yeah. Um, you give Orlando, even even in the made-up, or you give Orlando too much credit, Evan says, even in the made-up scenario. I don't know, man. I think I'm giving Miami too much credit, to be honest. But, you know, I – I like Orlando. They're a young team. Like I keep saying, I, I'm just not trying to overlook teams, you know, like, yeah. you know, like, like the Knicks, a lot of these teams have their own injuries and problems. But in my opinion, you know, it's those younger teams you sometimes got to watch out for, man, because yeah. Orlando, in my opinion, they're dangerous. You just they're playing with house money. They haven't been there before. So there's no real expectations on their shoulders, you know, yeah. with the Knicks. Obviously, we're trying to get past that second round mark. Yeah. All right, Chris, you want to go around the NBA? Yes, sir. Let's Starting off with Big Mitch. Happy birthday to Big Mitch, Mitchell Robinson, 26-year-old today. And, of course, it will be on April Fool's Day, right? <laughs> we all know Mitch is a clown, so yeah. happy birthday to Mitch. Happy birthday, Mitch, man. Hopefully we can get him back on the court versus the Miami Heat. That shit. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> he tweaked that. He took. He tweaked that foot again, and now he he he's out again. We also have this in the two minute report. The NBA says the non call on play with Jalen Brunson and Lou Dort was correct. Dort makes incidental contract contact with Brunson after the shot is released. Okay. Okay. I'll play along. <laughs> You're I'll not buying along. it. I mean. What when sense I, is when I saw just, that play, I don't we care saw anymore. that play I don't care over anymore. and over. There was definitely contact. But you know what? Like Bob says in the chat, if you have to rely on the referees, then we ain't playing well enough. The game should be in our hands. And I totally agree. Totally agree. Well said, Which Bob. is why we have to address the non-Jalen Brunson minutes, you know, once the bench comes in. But. Yeah. I'm kind of hoping Alec Burks puts on the like mics. You know, remember the movie Like Mike? Put on <laughs> oh, the man. Jordans. Hey, back. Get his superpowers back, man. Come on. That was that was a that was a pretty cheesy <laughs> movie, but but it's a classic. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Come on, Alec, man. We need you to just drop start dropping 20 to 25 off the bench. We need that, man. We need that. <laughs> Jaboni says JB isn't a foul hunter, but he is a complainer. If you are a known complainer, the rest will label you as a foul hunter or flopper. And that's why that's what they've done to Jalen Brunson. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't I don't feel like he's a complainer, but look, if I was out there getting hacked like Jalen Brunson, I'll complain too. We all would complain. Everyone complains, you know? And that's what superstars do. I can go down the list. Giannis complains. Uh <laughs> Luca definitely complains. Kevin Durant complains. They all complain, right? Yeah. So I don't want to label Jalen Brunson as you know a complainer. They all do it because they don't. They feel like they're not getting the call. So I just think I just think as of recently, I've seen Jalen Brunson for sure complaining a lot more. But I just think that's how obvious these fouls are, you know. But look, I'm not an NBA referee, so I'll leave it at that. But I just. I just think some of these calls are just – I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just a Knicks thing or what, but I do feel like Jalen Brunson deserves more calls than, than he gets. Yeah, yeah. So do I. Likewise, man. And hopefully, you know, I don't know what can come about this, but um, Chris, around the NBA, any, 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 anything else that intrigued you? Orlando, let's look at yeah. these scores tonight first, and then we'll, we'll touch on um, the LeBron James – hinting at retirement um so orlando won indiana won boston won they probably did they wrap up the number one seed already boston i believe so yeah so yeah that's the main teams that we're watching orlando won by one against portland come on portland you couldn't you couldn't couldn't make one more basket damn (laughs) that sucks (laughs) But yeah, and then Boston won, and, and and that's it. But yeah, LeBron, man, hinting at retirement soon. LeBron, you want to play that? You want to play the the video clip? Uh, I don't think I have it here. I don't think I have it here. So he pretty much said, "Yeah, I don't have it here." So he pretty much said he's not. 
he's not looking to play long after this, you know, the whole drama and the, he just wants attention. And that's what I feel like it is. Then he'll probably play like <laughs> 10 more years after that. He said, he said, I'm not going to play another 21 years. That's for damn sure, but not very long. I don't know when that door will close as far as when I'll retire, but I don't have much time left. Yeah, we'll see. Mind you, this was after he dropped 40 points, seven rebounds, five assists against the Brooklyn Nets and became the number one guy with the most 30 point games in his career over Michael Jordan and Will Chamberlain, which is insane. Yeah, Brooklyn, man. Oof. <laughs> yeah. You're a Brooklyn Nets fan. It's tough I right mean, now. Hey, you guys were talking all that ish back in when you guys signed KD and Kyrie back then, and now it's kind of, oh, how the tables have turned, right? But, yeah. For sure, man. For sure. But I kind of feel bad for them, so I'm not going to yeah. rub I don't more salt on in the wound. <laughs> John says Aiden had an open three to win against Orlando, but he missed. Oh. Yeah. That's a shame. All right, trivia. Let's do it. All right. Got this question for you, and let's see if I can stomp, stump you. You ready? Who is know. who is the New York Knicks all-time steals leader? You got Michael Ray Richardson, Mark Jackson, Patrick Ewing, or Charlie Ward. Who is the Knicks all-time steal leader? Steals leader. Michael Ray Richardson, Mark Jackson, Patrick Ewing, Charlie Ward. Give the people in the chat a few, a few, few minutes to chime in. Um, hmm. If you joined us last week, the question was a debacle. <laughs> <laughs> For our first, we started this new trivia last week, and Chris actually got the answer right, and I said he got it wrong. How dare you? <laughs> Mark Jackson steals leader. You know, Mark Jackson was he was crafty. Played a little bit of D. A little <laughs> bit. Patrick Ewing? No. I, I don't I don't see Patrick Ewing being the all Knicks all time steals leader. To me it's Charlie Ward or Richardson. Alright. I wanna say I want to say Ward, but something's telling me it's Richardson. Is that your final answer? <laughs> I think it's... I'm getting some help here from the chat. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I do think it's... All right, I'll go... Yeah, because I don't think it's Jackson, even though, you know, I don't think it's Hewing. And Ward... Mm. I'm going to go Richardson, final answer. All right. Michael Ray Richardson. So I'll tell you this. Let me go down the list a bit, or let me go in reverse order. Charlie Ward, 744 career steals. Let me jump to Mark Jackson. Oh, 720 <laughs> career steals. Okay, so it's Patrick Ewing, 1,061. No. Michael Ray Richardson, 810. Wow. The answer is Patrick Ewing. Just to That's... show you how crazy Patrick Chewing was on the New York Knicks. <laughs> Wait, he, so it's Ewing? It's actually wow. Ewing, one. Who do you think would be number two? It's Richardson, right? Number two. No. Or Ward. It's a, it's a beloved uh, Nick who's no longer allowed in MSG. No longer another, allowed in another MSG? Big, another Was big. Another big. Oakley? That's right. Charles <laughs> Oakley with 844 steals. Okay, big man. Okay, big man. 
And then Michael Ray Richardson with 810 in third. So, yeah, man, I was looking up for for a quest for a good question, man. I saw Patrick Ewing yes. as the Steelers leader. I was like, oh man, I gotta ask him this. That's something because I didn't think it was Ewing at all because I thought about Big Ben and, but I I, hey, I disrespected Patrick Ewing and I apologize. I apologize. <laughs> we had a lot of Richardson in the chat. That was kind of swaying me a little bit. John yeah. said Richardson, Quan well, said Richardson. Great says 33, got it right. Yeah. As far as I mean, he says, I should have listened to him. <laughs> Somebody said OG. <laughs> OG. <And an> OB. <laughs> no, like great, like great says in the, in, the, in the comments, if you go into the Chase Bank up, the escalator, you see all the Knicks leaders. Patrick got a lot, just pure playing time, and that's yeah. exactly it. He played 1,039 games versus 315 for Ray Richardson, so... There you yeah. go, man. The more games, the more deflections and steals, man. But... I'm upset. I got it wrong. Chris is one and zero. I'm zero and one. Let's I gotta, go. I gotta try to stump Chris next next week. Evan says, "Call a friend." I should have called. We should implement that. We should get life Oh yeah. man, we should implement that. It should come to me though. It should come to me. <laughs> but it, it wasn't. I mean, we get to the me. we get the axe to chat. So that that's a freebie right there. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's fun. Um, all right, poll update. Poll update. 53 votes. Wow. How far can the Knicks go with OG Ananobi and no Julius Randle? Eastern Conference Final is at 40%. Wow. They're winning now. So I think, Bert, I think we might have swayed everybody. I said there. <laughs> I said there, like they're a person. <laughs> Eastern Conference Final is at 40%. Second round is 34%. First round is at 26%. Okay, optimistic Nick fans. I see you in here. I love it, though. I love it. I love it. It is what it is. I love it. In light I, of the last two games and everything going on, I'll take it, man. That's that's awesome. Yeah, um, that is awesome. All right. Uh, I do think it'll be second round, but I, I love the, uh, the uh, optimism in here. Bob says, wow, 90s Knicks at its best. Um... Evan says, damn, I'm old. Jabroni <laughs> says if OG could play more than 55 games a season, he'd end up the all-time steals leader. He would have to play a lot of games, Jabroni, and I don't think that's that's going to happen. I mean, let, let's hope he does. Let's let, After this elbow thing, let's hope he does play a lot more games because, you know, for sure, I could see OG up there. Yeah. All right, this was fun, man. This was fun. Appreciate every single one of you in here. Got to try to stump Chris next week now, and uh, hopefully the Knicks can get back on track. I will be in the building in Miami, hoping hoping that the Knicks can pull out a victory in that game. But yeah, Chris, any last words before you wanted to before we wanted to head up on out of here? Yeah, man. One and oh. you got to get <laughs> me back, man. Bring bring a good question next time, but I'm gonna be ready for you, man. S550 says, Ann, are you wearing the chain for the mic? Should I wear should I bring out the chain? Should I bring oh, out the you chain? Got, you have to, man. Yeah. You gotta be looking like Spike Lee out there. Yeah, I'll bring out the chain. I'll bring out the chain. Oh, and Chris and I are actually playing fantasy basketball and we are facing each <laughs> other in the finals. Which is the thing about fantasy basketball, I know we're like so off topic right now, but <laughs> Last week I was facing some dude had Deuce McBride and he was going off. And I was like, oh gosh. Oh but yeah, Chris and I are facing in fantasy basketball. Should be a fun matchup, but yeah, I don't know. Hopefully, I'm, I will. I'm, I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> All right, guys, this was fun. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the thumbs up button. Hopefully, the next can pull out a victory. I'm Anthony. I'm Chris. Let's catch you guys next time. Peace. Peace.